This next speaker is going to round out our series of conversations this morning about mental health and our own well-being in the context of this broader world. He is an author, he is a creator, and it just so happens that we met last night and he was uh, grabbing a piece of bread from the hotel lobby and uh, so he's fully carbo-loaded to give you all of the energy that he has uh, to round us out for this morning's session. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Spar. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words and uh, a real honor uh, to be with you folks uh, today. And I want to take this opportunity to just say how proud I am of not only the um, 175 committee, but the uh, YMCA global leadership for including mental health on this important global platform. So thank you for that. You know, when I first started uh, talking about mental health, a lot of the things that I said, people weren't comfortable with. And I think looking back, maybe the world uh, wasn't ready to discuss the, the reality and the large scale impact that it was having on our society. But I'm here today, I see you, I hear you, and I'm with you. Mid 1980s, picture this, I'm a 20 year old uh, junior, at Ohio State University, um, a, uh, on scholarship, thank you, uh, I'm on scholarship, um, living my dream. Meanwhile, my mind is being overtaken by these terrible, obtrusive, unwanted thoughts that I'm powerless uh, to fight. And my mental health is uh, spiraling out of control. I'm scared, I'm alone, and what am I supposed to do? I couldn't talk to my teammates. They would think I was crazy. I couldn't talk to my coach. He'd probably bench me. I couldn't talk to my parents because I wouldn't want to, to put that, that burden on them. Mid-1980s, there were no mental health services that available, even on a, a campus like Ohio State. So I did what any good athlete would do. I sucked it up, and I got worse with something that nobody could see, I didn't even understand, and I couldn't even talk about it. Well, I didn't come to London today for you to feel bad for me. I came here instead to tell you I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm one of the lucky ones because I got diagnosed with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and for the last 35 years, I've fought a debilitating illness that tries to steal from me every moment of my life, even as I stand here in front of you right now. But through medication, exposure therapy, and for those of you that aren't familiar with exposure therapy, it's a painful process where you basically expose yourself to what you fear the most in the hope of eventually inoculating yourself a loving family, a support network. I've been able to have this, this wonderful life. I have three beautiful kids, a beautiful wife, and it all looks good on the outside. Unfortunately, I can't control the attacks. So what I choose to focus on is what I can control, what I can do. I can choose to exercise. I can choose to meditate. I can choose to do yoga. I can choose to journal. All things I do probably before most everybody here woke up this morning, to be honest with you. Unfortunately, myself, like millions of others that suffer from mental illness, I've been looking for that magic potion to make me better. Well, I'm here to tell you a little secret. There ain't no magic potion. Thank God I found creativity. 
25 years ago, I'm coming home from work one day. Picture this. And I get a call from a friend and says to me, hey, Jeff, I read an article and they said that painting might be good for you. I never painted a day in my damn life. But when you're desperate, you know what you'll try? Anything. So I rerouted, went to the paint art supply store, I came home, and I never stopped. Creativity literally changed my life. It was like I had found this, this superpower. It gave me a, a sense of control that not only OCD, but all mental illnesses can rob you of. It gave me a way through my, my own images and paintings to express what I couldn't find the words to say. It provided me a, a vulnerable space, a safe space where I could share not only my art, but my story. And that in turn led to this in next improbable thing that people actually liked my artwork, which was crazy considering the fact that I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And when I say no idea, I mean no idea. And I don't know whether, you know, people connected to my uh, willingness through my images to, to, to say what I was going through. I painted things like Half Daddy, how I felt when I was with my children, or Stop the Madness in my head, or Getting Better. Maybe it was my uh, whimsical style and my use of colors, and I had all kinds of titles. Maybe, in fact, it was my faceless characters, which is my, my trademark. And I think, you know, most people think is the face of mental illness or is community or all this heavy stuff when the truth is I just can't draw a damn face. But anyways, um, it got to the point where people uh, started to uh, put my stuff into some private collections. It made its way to some galleries. Next thing you know, it's in a casino. Next thing you know, it's at the Grammys Music Cares. And people actually want to start buying my artwork. Well, to be honest with you, I was a little uncomfortable facilitating the sale myself. So I just gave it to people for the most part. Well, enter my cousin Matthew Kaplan. Matt uh, suggested to me that that was not a really uh, good thing, business proposition for my art career. So he was kind enough to uh, offer to host a uh, art show for my work. So a couple months later, Matt has this art show and he comes up to me at the end of the night and he's all excited and he says, you're not gonna believe this, man. He said we sold $16,000 of art tonight. And I'm like, woo, that's awesome, dude. He says, what do you wanna do with the money? I could think of a lot of things to do with a spare 16K. And then I stopped, and it would be the moment that literally would change my life. I looked at him and I said, you know, Matt, I paint. It makes me feel better. Maybe it'll help somebody else. That's it. Two weeks later, two weeks later, I walked on into a hospital, a psychiatric children's unit that not only was I a board member of, but I was a patient. And I remember like it was yesterday, walking through that hospital, I had a bag of art supplies over my shoulder, paints and brushes, and I'm walking through this lobby, and I get onto the unit, and you know, eight to 12 year old kids, you know, battling all types of mental health challenges, including OCD, and it hit me really hard. It hit me really hard, I had three young kids at the time, and to be honest with you, at that point I panicked. I panicked because I realized I didn't have any qualifications. What the heck am I doing there? I'm not a doctor. I'm not an art therapist. All I was was someone that just wanted to help. So I did the only thing that I was qualified to do and the only thing I was comfortable doing. I told these kids my story. And as part of, of my story, I was explaining to the kids my own battle with mental illness and an OCD. And as I said that, out of nowhere, I hear this, hey, Jeff, I got OCD too. And I'm like, it startled me, right? And I look out and it was this young boy. His name was Nathan. He's probably 10 years old and he's looking at me all excited. And I exchanged a, a look and a glance with him that 
I can't even explain to you. It defied the four decades difference in our age. And the class, you know, started and I shared with the kids that day, you know, uh, my own art and my process and, and how I did it and how it helped me find some uh, peace of mind. I had, you know, uh, boards that I showed them with hot wheels and things that were, you know, maybe they'd be interested in. And I was surprised by a couple things. One, um, that they were interested because I didn't know what to expect, but more, I was surprised at how much these kids understood. They got what I was talking about, which shocked me. So now it comes time to start the class and I put the brushes out and the canvases and the paints and it's time to go and I put my hand up with a piece of paper and I go like this and I rip it up and I say, okay, there are no rules to this class and I throw it up in the air and all the kids are running around and they're picking it up. I mean, it's out of control. And I say, oh, but there's two things. I said, you have to have fun and I want you to make mistakes. I said, because that's where true creativity comes when you start making real mistakes. So the class starts and I wish everybody could see what was going on. These kids start painting on the canvases, they're painting on the tables, they're painting on each other, they're painting on me. And you know, it's hard to even imagine where I am and what's, what's happening, right? So now it's time uh, to share and I figured I would try something. I figured, okay, who would like to share their painting and what gives them some peace of mind? I had no idea what to expect. Completely shocked as one kid after another. Not only did they want to share, they held their paintings up like this, and in most cases like this, and shared what gave them peace of mind as best they could, and in many cases their own struggle, and the other kids in the room, they clapped and they applauded. And I didn't know what, I knew I was watching something that was truly remarkable. So I looked over at the docs, I looked over at the art therapist, I looked over at the other observers that were watching this for the first time. And I could see them, they're all going like, what the heck is going on here? It was, you know, truly remarkable. And at that point, I realized that Nathan wasn't there. So I said to the art therapist, I said, excuse me, could you tell me where's Nathan? Art therapist goes like this, down and he says, he's under there. He's under the table. He said he's been down there for like 10 minutes with a pen and a pad. Okay, well we get going and about 10 minutes later, he resurfaces and I can do this. Oh, he resurfaces. And he says to me, he says, you know, Jeff, I have something I'd like to give you. The art therapist escorts me out into the quarter. And this young man reads me this note, which is behind me. And I'll read it if I can to you. Jeff, you are a nice person. I like you a lot. Thank you for teaching us lots of things. You are a good guy. My dad told me you should follow your dreams and keep up the good work. Love your friend, Nathan. Thank you. Now I ask you, does a guy like me need any more inspiration than that? That was my first experience and doing what I do today of sharing my story and trying to, to help others, you know, use creativity to find their emotions. Because the truth is, when we share our stories, we create community, we create safe space, we create trust, and we create a kinder, gentler, maybe more empathetic, you know, world to try to, to have these conversations. You know, people uh, think what I do and they'll say to me, you know, Jeff, uh, it's courageous, it's brave to get up here and, and, and share your story. And to be honest with you, 
I don't even think twice about it. I think of it more as my obligation and a privilege to do that. So what I'd like to leave with you is two things, because this work is something that we are going to have to do together. Together, we are going to have to, as a global community, harness the power of creativity and storytelling to make it a little easier to talk about, as well as support, mental health and wellness. You know, every Wednesday morning, every Wednesday at 6 a.m., I paint, no matter what. No matter where I am in the world, no matter what I'm doing. And obviously, it's a, I get some peace of mind from it. That's what got me here. But I think equally and maybe more important, it's a reminder that I've got to take care of myself. So with that, I want to challenge all of you. I want to challenge all of you to invite creativity into your life. Over the next few days, I want you, you can paint, you can draw, you can sketch, you can take a photo, but I want you to do something. And I want you to share that with me at this email address. And I can assure you, I will get it. And if you do that, I'm going to send you an original piece of my art as a way of saying thank you for taking care of yourself. You know, we have many challenges that we face as a global society mental health being one of them. But before we can change that conversation, and before we can take care of others, we need to take care of ourselves. This revolution starts with you. Thank you.